Hey friends, so today I want to show you my 1956 Singer 401A. It is a slant needle machine. It is all metal. It does have some plastic components and some plastic insertable fashion discs, but we'll get to that in just a moment. It has an assortment of built-in decorative stitches. And I'll tell you right up front, uh, I wasn't able to try them all because unfortunately I only have a zipper foot attachment for this and I, without thinking, started selecting all the stitches to do all these fancy, wonderful things. And I actually broke quite a few needles until I realized what I was doing wrong. So I won't show you a stitch sampler in this video, but I do really look forward to using that capability. As I just mentioned, it does have insertable fashion discs that you can use to get an assortment of special stitches. In this video, I'll show you what I did to get it into this state, and then I'll show you the first project that I made using this machine, which is this blouse that I am wearing currently. I just wanna say that I am not a professional. I do have some small motor experience and I am an avid seamstress. However, I am just figuring it out and learning, and I just wanna show you what I did to get to this point. I highly recommend doing your own research and searching around for additional instructionals to help you along if you have a more severe situation than I did with this one. Today I'm going to be testing out the Singer 401A. It came with a hard plastic case, uh, the machine itself. It only has one cam in here and the foot pedal and power cord. Cosmetically speaking, it is gorgeous. It has no physical flaws that I can tell. The only thing that's a little off at this moment is that the knob in the center is currently stuck. But with some oiling, hopefully I can get her moving. I always start by cleaning the exterior just with some sewing oil, just to wipe it down and see what I'm dealing with. The other thing worth mentioning, which I think is a common instance for these vintage machines, this has a strong, musty, I've lived in the basement for the past 40 years kind of smell. I don't know how to remedy that at this moment. I just deal with the mechanics first and then go from there. So I was able just to move it down a couple notches and I can't really do much else. I just want to stress that you do not want to put physical pressure on these little selectors. They are attached to these knobs. This one is to the front one, and this one is to the back one. You could easily break them. It's more of a visual guide for these two, but you just don't want to put physical pressure and accidentally snap them. This is the first machine that I have had this on here. It is a cover and you release it by unscrewing the center here. But I wanted to note since we're underneath the machine, this machine has its serial number on the underside. So I'm just twisting it. So this smells terrible. It's very musty smelling. That's probably mold and dust. Not good. I am just gonna oil a couple key spots and dust a little bit and I'll figure out a good way to clean that. Okay, I was just able to wipe it down. It's super nasty. This is just a small washcloth, terry cloth, but it took it right off. So I'm just gonna probably air it out in my garage for a couple days just to get that really musty, terrible smell out. And this is something I normally don't do because I will just wipe it down with just a plain cloth, but I can see that there's mold on this. So I'm just gonna wipe around the plug and the foot pedal with a disinfectant wipe. Again, I normally wouldn't recommend this, but this is, <laughs> this is so dirty and smelly. I think it warrants it and if I ruin this one, I know I have a backup, but if you don't have a backup, I would just wipe it down with a small cotton cloth. I just wanna emphasize, do not get any liquid around you know, the plugs, any place where liquid could seep in. You don't want any liquid to get in anywhere ever on these things. 
One good thing about airing it out for a couple days, the uh, oil has had an opportunity to work its way around the machine and things are uh, moving. They're moving. So usually I'm in the camp of don't mess with it if it seems to be functioning, but I wasn't really liking how much grease was coming up underneath the cam and I think my timing might be off. So I'm gonna go ahead and you use a screwdriver right there and clean this up and reset the timing. So at this point, this bad boy just comes up and we are gross. So I'm glad I'm doing this now. And I just wanna say my machine is unplugged and please unplug your machine too when you work on it. Wow. Wow. I hope it comes apart. I think I just have to twist this and kind of pull apart. Like this should come apart together just with some elbow grease. Yuck. Uh, we did have to, we, my husband, busted out this guy. So we had to apply heat because there was a significant like seal from quite a bit of grease that had been sitting there for probably, you know, at least four decades. I got this girl. She submitted. I have the cam stack disc soaking here and just some Dawn dish soap and some hot water. So they've been soaking for about a half an hour. So I'm just going to scrub them clean now. The top piece, as you can see, had a little bit of rust looking like residue. So I decided just to wipe it down with some sewing machine oil pretty vigorously and rub out that stuff that surfaced from the cleaning. When putting the cam stack back together, the discs go in descending order. So you're gonna wanna grab number seven disc first. It has that little slash timing mark on the top. It's engraved and the bottom one will be number one. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The top cap part of the cam stack, this little black piece that I'm holding here, it has a little notch that goes right into that pin and you'll be able to just to stack everything underneath it. I'm about ready to reinstall the stack. I just want to mention that this is one of the first issues that I noticed with this. You can see that these are stripped. They're not down all the way. I have to screw them in. Uh, don't do this. Find the right screwdriver for the job and don't strip them. These screws are probably proprietary because a lot of sewing machine stuff back in the day were proprietary pieces and uh, good luck finding another piece, uh, even a screw that will fit. So don't do this. Before dropping the stack in, you're going to want to refer to the manual to see what settings you'll need to have it in. The position of the followers makes a difference here for timing and correct installation. Again, I just wanna stress, I am just an amateur. Definitely look this up, but you're gonna want to not drop in the cam stack all the way to set the gear into place. You're gonna wanna fiddle with it to make sure that little engraved mark is pointing at the pointer tip.
I'm getting ready to sew my first project and I always recommend double checking the bobbin thread spool. Don't ever trust it. The thread could be old or saturated or just not in good quality after maybe living there for 40 to 70 years. But also, <laughs> I still don't understand why this was a thing. I mean, yeah, you're, you're not wasting anything, but this was in my machine. There are, it looks to be three different colors of thread on here. Yeah, so definitely just unwind your bobbin and uh, start fresh. has the automatic stop. So I pulled these two out of my wardrobe storage little area and what I read online was that these are compatible and I actually have a full set here and I know this box has some in here too and I actually have a whole nother full set of the 600 and 603s. So I am going to just switch out what is that cam number five for let's try how about cam number four and you just then you just pop it in here's the fabric i'm going to use for my project that will be the maiden voyage project for my 401a i do like to keep within the decade uh, that the machine was made my 401a was made in 1956 and i found a 1952 pattern that i've been actually wanting to make for a while very excited to make this we'll see how it goes For this pattern, it was only four pieces. I did modify it by adding a zipper since I had uh, zippers and a zipper foot attachment instead of buttons on back. Okay, so my final thoughts on this machine. It is a wonderful machine. It has a very strong motor. I absolutely love the all metal frame and pieces. It's just so much easier to work with despite the effort that I had to put into, you know, cleaning the internals. It was well worth it because obviously it, it turned out well for me. I do have other machines with uh, similar built-in stitching, decorative stitching capabilities. So I'll probably still use those machines for this, but if you don't have one, I highly recommend it. With my personal situation with this one, and how smooth and easy the zipper installation went for my blouse that I'm wearing, this is gonna become my zipper machine. It just happened to be that it only came with the zipper foot attachment. You know, it was serendipity. Uh, it went in so smoothly, I had no problems, no bunching, it just fed like a dream. So that's an option too if you are a collector and you are adding to your collection. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe learned a little something, and I just wanna encourage you again to give a second look to any old machine that you find at the thrift store, garage sale, buy nothing groups, wherever they happen to pop up, side of the road sometimes, because there's a lot of life in these machines still yet to give. So, thanks for watching.